Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with lesson number 19 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're learning how to do 3D graphics and 3D animations in Python. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice strong cup of coffee. That would be straight up black coffee, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. That's your go juice. Go get you some. What I'm also going to need you to do is call up your most excellent Visual Studio Code. And as you're calling up Visual Studio Code, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what we're going to learn today. I'm going to show you today how to annotate your 3D models and your 3D animations with text. So we're going to see how to manipulate text and add text to our displays. And so what the easiest thing to do, I will hook you guys up. I will hook a few brothers and sisters up by kind of thinking that the best place for us to start is where we left off in lesson number 18. And in case you have not been playing along at home, I'll give you a place where you can get the code that we ended up with in lesson number 18. Go to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com and you can search on Python 3D graphics tutorial 18. Search on that. You'll come up with this and then we have the code there. You can click on the little double page icon, right mouse click and copy, and you can snag that code. Come over here and in Visual Studio Code, we're going to create a new file. And so we are working in the vPython folder and I will click on the little add file icon and we will call this addText.com. P P Y. Okay, add text.py. I will hit enter. We have a fresh new Python program just ready to be written or copied and pasted to at least get started. So we'll paste this. And this is a 3D animation that creates a clock graphic. Just to make sure that the universe is in proper order and nothing has gone amiss, let's go ahead and run this program and make sure that it operates as we expect. And boom, we have a clock. The clock is showing the proper time. It is 11, uh, 23 here. And so that is showing the proper time. And the hands are moving, uh, moving properly. Okay, so that's our clock. But what you could imagine is it might be kind of neat to be able to add some text to that, some labels, uh, some annotating remarks to that. And the way you do that, I will come up here before the while loop. I will also leave the Explorer view. Before the while loop, let's just create a text label. So what am I going to do? I'm going to create an object. I'm going to call it my label like that. And now what is that object? Well, in vPython, we are going to call the text command. And then what we need to give it is we got to tell it what text we want to put. Well, I'm going to say my text is equal to, and then you put in single quotes a string, and you could say Texas time like that. Okay, so let's just do as simple as possible and let's see what happens if we do that. We'll come over here. We will run the program. Okay, and boom. Now, a couple of things that you see is it seems like we know that the center of our view, the center of our visualization is the center of the clock. So one thing right off that we see is, is that it seems that the text command orients things to the lower left corner of your text string it puts in the center. We can also see for this display, it is the text is much too too tall. And so let's make a few adjustments in that text call and let's see if we can zone, let's see if we can kind of hone in on something a little better. Well, one thing is I didn't like it aligning from the left 
bottom. And so let's just see if we can do a an align is equal to, let's align it in the center. And so we're going to come over here and now at least it should put it over. And now I think I am going to create, I like to do things with parameters. And so I'm going to say text height text h is equal to and i want to kind of put it in terms of the radius of the clock and i do believe that we had set the radius of the clock up here i just got to see what variable we used what variable it looks like clock uppercase r was the variable we used so we will come down here and we will say it is clock r the clock radius and i think kind of divided by four would be about right and so that should make a nice label and so <clears throat> we now have uh we're going to align it in the center which should align it left and right now i'm not sure if it's going to align it left and right and top and bottom or just align it left and right but we'll see this when we give the align center command let's go ahead and say color is equal to color dot orange color dot orange and you guys from the uk if you do this funky UK spelling on color, I don't think that it's going to work because I think it likes US spelling on color. Sorry, I didn't write the program. I'm just giving you the news. Okay, and then let's set the height, the text height. Let's set that to text H. So the parameter is height and we're going to set it to this text H, which should be the radius divided by four. And let's just run this and see how that looks. It should kind of be in the middle now. Okay, boom. Now what you can see is that's actually, that's probably about the right size. One of the things though that you can see here is you can see that it is aligning the text to the origin left and right, but it's not aligning it up and down. So you got to remember that when you give it a position, it is giving you the position that is the center of the bounding box of the text the center left and right but then it is the bottom of the bounding box and so you got to keep that in mind because you might have to do some adjustments for that later now we probably don't like that right there because it is interfering with our hands and so what would we like to do now we would probably like to put the label mm, let's say above okay let's say that we're going to put it above and remember we need to do this with parameters and so what I am going to say is I'm going to say the position is equal to a vector and then remember it is going to be x y and z well the main thing we don't really want to change x we want to change y and so where would we want to put it we would not change x so we'll put a zero there at y we want to put it up at about the radius i think clock radius and we're probably going to have to give it a little bit more than that and so i'm going to say like maybe 1.1 times clock radius now again one of the things you can see with parametric design i don't want to add a little bit because i could radically change clock radius and that little fudge factor of adding isn't going to work for a different radius but if it's always 1.1 times the radius even as we change the clock radius it should still work and then on z we're just going to start with zero and see how that goes okay so let's do that and let's kill this and now let's run this okay look at that that's pretty neat now it's got kind of a okay it's sort of like you're getting some uh you're getting some reflection off the letters and that's why the colors look a little bit different but i think that is just absolutely dandy i think it is the right size and i think it is the right color and i think it is the right placement and so i really like that now we do need to kind of look at it in 3d and what you can see is you can see that the center, the origin is at the center of the clock face. 
but you can see that it looks like that it is putting the Texas time up above that. And so what I want to do is I want to make the Texas time like I want to set its depth. It looks like I didn't set the depth of the letters. And so I want to move in and I want to set those depth, the depth to the same as the clock that thickness and so let's come over here let's come back over here and now what I am going to do is I'm going to add another parameter and that is going to be depth and the depth is going to be equal to whatever we called the clock thickness I think it was clock T up here yeah clock T so we're going to set the depth to the clock T and remember where we are here right before that while loop okay and we're creating our my label here and so I will go out here and then I will say the depth is equal to clock T for clock thickness now that should make it the right thickness but it's probably going to be a little bit too close because it's laying it down on the zero it's laying it down. I'm trying to think of my orientation. It's laying it down on the zero Z position and we're probably going to want to scoot it back a little bit. But let's look at this and I don't think I killed it. So let's try it again. Okay, so let's look at this. Okay, what is the good news? The good news is, in fact, I have the depth of the text the same as the thickness of the clock. But like I suspected, it is a little bit this way because it's laying the back of that 3D text. It's laying the back of that against the origin. And so I need to move it. Remember, X, Y, positive Z is towards me. And so I need to move it back in Z in the negative, in the negative Z direction by half the thickness of the clock half the thickness of the clock and then that should fix it okay and so what we need to do here i'll add it up front just so it's a little bit easier we're going to say the position or no i've already done the position i need to go back and edit the position okay and what i did was i left it alone in x i moved it up 1.1 times the clock radius and now in z positive x y positive z is towards me so i need to move it in the negative z direction by clock clock thickness divided by two because its depth itself is clock thickness and so if I move it back by half its own depth, that should align it perfectly with the clock face. So let's try that. Okay, that looks good. And now we are going to come in here and look at that. You see it's perfectly aligned now in three dimensions. And we have done this with parameters. And what's the neat thing about parameters? Let's see the neat thing that happens when we do things with parameters. Well, I could come in here and I could make the clock. Let's make the clock twice as big, okay? I'm going to make the clock the clock radius instead of one, I'm going to make it two. And since we've done parametric design, I think everything else should really work here. So we're going to run this. Okay, look at that. You see, it adjusted all the parameters from how long the hands are to how big the tick marks are to how big the text is. Everything adjusted so that when we change a size, it doesn't break our model. That is parametric design, and that's something really important. And you guys that have been following along with me know how to do that. Okay, so let's look and let me uh, kind of come back over here and see if there's any other parameters I should clue you in on on this text command. I have talked to you about the text itself is the text tag, the text parameter. Then we align center to get it right, left and right with the center of the text box. Then we uh, can set a color. We can set a height of the text and we can set the position of the text and then we can set the depth. That's kind of like how thick the text is. Okay, and so we've got ourselves a nice label. You could make new labels. You could do all types of different things. Another thing that you got to see, we're not going to do it here, but if I wanted to change that text, I could go my 
I could go my label dot t e x t, and then I could change it to is equal to let's just say let's just say Florida time, and then this should change it from Texas time to Florida time. It's going to happen so quickly, you're probably not even going to see Texas time. But I just want to show you that you can dynamically change that. Okay, so let's see. You can dynamically change what that is. Oh, whoa. I said you could. Let me go back and see. I kind of broke something because it's the clock's not running. So let's see my label dot text and let me kill this. Okay, I might have lied on that one. Uh, my label dot t e x t. Uh, let's see. This is kind of strange because I'm pretty sure I can do this. Let me put it down here and just see if that will do anything. I'm not sure how I killed that. Also, I think I've got a print statement in here. And when I have that print statement, it's not letting me see my error. So let's see what happens here. Okay, something I killed there. Okay, you know what? I think maybe on these text commands, the text command is a really, really slow command. And so it very well could be that you cannot dynamically update that, which is kind of a bummer. But how, uh, How would we do that? I guess, man, this is just one of the, this is one of the commands that when you put your label on there, you better put what you want because it appears. And the reason I got thrown off there is the earlier versions would allow you to dynamically change your, uh, your text. But it appears that this uh, later version of vPython won't let you do that. But nonetheless, you can put nice labels on your, uh, you can put nice labels on your displays. And so let's see see we've done text we've done <clears throat> the alignment the color the height the position and the depth and that is a pretty nice set of parameters so that you can put nice labels and nice annotations on your displays okay so now i'm going to tell you what the homework is for next week yes you're going to have a homework and let's see if you guys can guess what it is okay let's see if you can guess what it is what i need you to do is now go in and put your labels okay put your numeric labels on your analog clock and I want you to see that I really have my alignment done properly so I want you to do the alignment now I will tell you again there is the easy way to do this and there is the impossible way to do this and if you try to do it the hard way it's going to turn out to be impossible so your homework for next week is to go ahead and get your numerical digits on your clock okay guys hopefully uh, you will be able to figure this out out. Leave me a comment down below whether you were able to do this on your own. If you were, say, I am legend, and otherwise say, uh, I folded up like a cheap lawn chair. Okay, so let's see if you guys were able to do this yourself. Really, I've given you more than enough clues in this lesson and earlier lessons to do this. So you guys really try to figure this out. There's also some code, some of the code uh, that you started with in this would sort of help you figure out how to do this. So I hope you guys can figure it out. Let me know how it went for you. Okay, guys, I hope you're having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making the lessons. And I really look forward to seeing your solutions. If you get a really cool solution, take a screenshot of it, do a little screen capture, or take a, you know, take a little video of it with your phone, post it on YouTube, and then put a link in the comments down below so I can see what you guys are doing. Let's see how nice of an analog clocks you guys are coming up with. Again, Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com. I'll talk to you guys next week.